Hello everyone, this video is about the temperature of stars and what you need to be able to do is you need to understand why stars are considered as black bodies and you have to be able to use Wien's law and black body curves to work out star temperatures. So the business that we're into here is we're trying to work out the temperature of the star and from that other properties can be worked out. If you look at the picture here you can see lots of beautiful stars, there are red ones, orange, yellow, uh, white stars and also some blue stars. So we said before that the only information that you can get from stars pretty much is, is via their light. So what can we use these colours for? What information can we get about stars from them? So to start to understand this we have to think about a phenomenon called incandescence. So incandescence is where an object will emit visible light when it gets to a high temperature. So if you get an object and you take it above about 800 Kelvin, it will start to glow red hot. And that's true of pretty much any object, whatever it is, it will glow red hot. Go a bit hotter and objects will start to glow white hot. So if you look here, this is a common example is fireworks. So in fireworks, the little lumps of metal get very hot and they will glow white hot. Go even hotter and most materials will just melt. But if you get very hot ionized gases like in a star, you will actually see things glowing blue hot. So why is it that these objects are emitting this light? Well, it turns out that all objects, as long as they have some temperature, are emitting radiation. And this radiation is called black body radiation. A black body is defined as something that's a perfect emitter and absorber of electromagnetic radiation. So it will absorb all of the electromagnetic radiation that falls on it. And it's also very good at emitting it right across the spectrum. So how is it that, say, for example, a lump of ice that's very cold is emitting electromagnetic waves? Well, what temperature does to an object, it gives the particles inside kinetic energy. We know that from the thermal physics module. So, and when things have kinetic energy, they move. And all you have to do to make an electromagnetic wave is shake a charge. So any charge that's vibrating is gonna create an electromagnetic wave. So here's an example, a charge is vibrating up and down, it's creating an EM wave. Now, it turns out that if you've got some stuff, a lump of matter, there are so many atoms in there that are all charged, you know, electrons, protons, and so on, and they're all whizzing around, they're bumping into each other, that you've got molecules that are vibrating and um, uh, all sorts of collisions and accelerations and decelerations that are happening. It turns out that matter is actually really good at making electromagnetic waves. So any type of frequency of electromagnetic radiation that you want, there will be some sort of vibration of charge inside the material that's going to give you an electro electromagnetic wave of that frequency. Um, so here is an example. In the diagram, we've got different uh, ways that molecules can stretch and twist and spin and rotate and so on. Um, all of those are going to give rise to frequencies of electromagnetic radiation being emitted. And as you go to higher energies, then things like absorption and emission of photons from energy levels in atoms may contribute. Obviously, those are at very discrete wavelengths, so they're not going to contribute much to this continuum of wavelengths. But in molecules, the energy levels, there are a lot more of them and they're a lot closer together. And so molecular energy levels will also contribute a little bit to the black body spectrum, but mostly it's from the vibration of charge. What this means is if you look at an object that is at a certain temperature and you measure the power that's been radiated at different wavelengths, you will see that every object has this spectrum where there's some power being radiated at most wavelengths, all the wavelengths continuously, but there will be some peak, some wavelength where the peak of the power will be. And you can see in the, in the diagram here that this is an object, for example, the, the red curve is an object at a thousand Kelvin. It's radiating in the infrared. There is a little bit of the power has been radiated in the visible part of the spectrum. So maybe this is a, a, an incandescent light bulb most of the energy has been wasted as infrared as heat, but it is also shining out some light. Now, as you go higher in temperature, you'll notice two things. One is that the total amount of uh, power 
being radiated is increasing there. So the peak is going up, so it's getting brighter. Um, but also every wavelength has an increase in power. And you can also see that as you increase the temperature, the peak, the lambda max we call it, is shifting to the left. And that displacement can be captured mathematically in something called Wien's displacement law. So here is Wien's displacement law, it's on your data sheet. And this says that the wavelength of, of the peak power is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature of the surface of a black body. Now that's really important, it has to be the surface. It will tell you the temperature of the star surface, but the temperature of stars increases as you go towards the center. So this is just a surface temperature. Now that constant there, constant of proportionality, is equal to 0 0.0029 meter kelvins. Be really careful with that one because it's often written lowercase m, capital K, which looks a little bit like millikelvin, but it's not millikelvin, it's meter kelvin. And what that tells you is, at a given temperature, what, what would the wavelength be? So let's have a look here. Calculate the peak wavelength emitted by the sun if its surface temperature is 6,000 Kelvin. So here we go. So first of all, we're gonna to have to use Wien's law. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm first of all going to write Wien's law. So we've got lambda, which is what we're trying to calculate, equals 0 0.0029 over the temperature, which is 6000 Kelvin. Notice I'm using Kelvin there. So if you put that in, you will get a peak wavelength of 4.83 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters. And what we can do is we can quote that in nanometers, 483 nanometers. Now what I should have done is I should have written that in green because that wavelength is actually in the green part of the spectrum. So if you look at the solar spectrum, shown here, in this diagram, the peak of the solar spectrum is actually corresponds to the green part of the spectrum. So why isn't the sun green? Well, it also emits in the red and the blue parts of the spectrum. And your eyes have detectors for red and blue as well. And when all three come together, your eyes interpret that as white. So the sun is actually a white star. It's emitting all the wavelengths in the visible spectrum, not equally, but enough for it to appear white. Now, so if you ask the person in the street what colour is the sun, they'll say yellow. Uh, but we know from other parts of the course that the from the white light from the sun, the blue bits are getting scattered out by the molecules in the air. So that's what gives the sun a yellow or a reddish tint sometimes. We know that the sun is definitely white because if you go outside and hold up a piece of paper, the piece of paper will appear white. If the sun was yellow, the piece of paper would appear yellow. You'll also see pictures taken from space of the sun, like the picture in the top right corner there. That looks very orange. Well, that's just because that's been photographed at a particular wavelength to see past the sun's glare and an outer atmosphere to see in a little bit. So that was taken at that particular wavelength. Some more questions with Fiend's displacement law. So we've got our good old friend, the constellation Orion, and there are two stars in the constellation. Uh, Betelgeuse and Rigel. And we're told the wavelengths of both of those stars and we're asked to calculate the surface temperatures. So let's try, we'll do Betelgeuse first. So we're going to use, we're working out the temperature, so we're going to use T equals 0 0.0029 over lambda. And for Betelgeuse we can put the numbers in, so we'll call it TB, T Betelgeuse. We're going to put our numbers in 0 0.0029 divided by, and the wavelength is 828 nanometers. So let's be careful with our standard form here. So there we go 828 times 10 to the minus 9, and we put that those numbers in a calculator, and we would get 3500 Kelvin. 
Now looking at that wavelength there, that wavelength of Betelgeuse, 828 nanometers is, it's a very long wavelength. It's, uh, it's probably outside the visible spectrum. So Betelgeuse will, will radiate a lot in the infrared and a little bit of it will be in the visible part of the spectrum. Obviously it is a visible star because we can see it. Uh, let's do the second star. So we've got uh, Rigel wavelength is here, 263 nanometers. So the temperature of Rigel, very nice formula to use. Nothing complicated. 2.63 times 10 to the minus 7. So I'll do it in this way. 263 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. You put that temperature in and you get 11,000 Kelvin. So look at that. Two stars in the same constellation. Very different temperatures there and actually that wavelength there for Rigel is definitely lower than the wavelength of violet light so this is in the ultraviolet so Rigel is an ultraviolet star which tends to be um, the very hot stars or sometimes very young stars let's do another example this time it's not a star we're just told rather mysteriously that it's a very large black body and it has a thermal temperature of 2.7 Kelvin. What would it be? What would be the wavelength of its uh, maximum power emission? Right, let's have a look then. So we're going to use the same formula again. So this time we are calculating the wavelength. So we do lambda equals 0.0029 divided by the temperature. And in this case, we're told it's just 2.7 Kelvin. So whatever it is, it's very cold. We put that into a calculator and we're going to see a temperature, a wavelength of 0 0.00011 meters. So what is that? If I go one, two, three, it's 1.1 millimeters. Now, if you look that up, that is actually a wavelength that corresponds to microwaves. So what could it be that emitting microwaves that's a very large black body well it's actually the entire universe and this microwave background is the cosmic microwave background that was detected in 1965 and it's one of the main pieces of evidence that supports the big bang theory for the origin of the universe and actually if you look up in the sky and you look in different directions you can see this microwave background and from it you can start to infer all sorts of things about the early universe. So that's a quick tour of why stars are black body radiators and what information we can tell from the spectrum of a star, from the colour of the star. And the main piece of information that we can tell is their temperature. And you'll see in forthcoming videos why that's useful and what else we can get from that.